Next point. Okay. One Christ head and members joined in love. This is the goal of Augustine. Let me read this. Before this, can you give me the preceding? Preceding? Yeah. Before that. After that. Okay, this one. The goal of Augustine's monasticism is one Christ, head and members, joined in love. This is his dream. This is the goal of Augustine's monasticism. And monasticism of Augustine has the following characteristics. The next frame. Okay. A Christian community of people who love one another as Christ loves them. That is monasticism in the concept of Augustine. Monks emulate the martyrs. Their life is a continual dying to oneself to be understood in the light of the cross and its redemptive value. Grace makes the monk's life in Christ possible. But listen to this. Both those in monasteries and other Christians are to manifest the love and unity described in the Acts of the Apostles. You are familiar with the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. It's the Magna Carta of Christian living. So the monastic ideals of Augustine are not for monks only. They are for all Christians. Okay. Now let's go to the second concern. Reroute. Next frame, please. Reroute. How do we reroute? The rerouting here is actually the return to Christ as described in the Holy Scriptures. To live monastic life is to be genuinely reflective and responsive to God's presence in us. Is this not for all? Is this only for the monks? Is this only for priests? Friends, this is for all. Can we live a life, a genuine way of living life, that is reflective, responsive to God's presence in us. Can we sense the presence of God in this pandemic? Can we sense the presence of God in our present suffering? That is not for monks. That's for each one of us. To become authentic witness to Christian life. This also is for us, for all of us. Monastic life is none other than living the Christian life seriously, and with integrity. You see the beauty of this? That's why I call this reroute. How do we reroute to this? Okay, let's move now to the next item. Okay. The rule of St. Augustine is our guide. In the rule of St. Augustine, what you find are the following. The rule provides concrete and humble ways to live out and share the love of God and neighbor. Remember that the rule of St. Augustine was written for lay. It was not written for religious. They were written for the lay. One heart and mind intent upon God from the Acts of the Apostle. And this oneness of heart and mind should be expressed in the following, solidarity and sharing of goods, prayer and service. Are this not affecting all aspects of our life in this world and always with eternity in view? See, the beauty of Augustine is he sees the world realistically, but at the same time, he recognizes the presence of eternity in the world we live in. Next frame. So from here, we move to the third part and the last part. In this third part, what I would like to leave with you are challenges, not only for myself, but challenges for all of us. Because it is the practice of Augustine 
that if he speaks of himself, he is also addressing himself to all. When he speaks of his person in the Confessions, for example, he is addressing the entire humanity. So what can we do? Will this return and will this rerouting help us renew? Have courage again to live Christian life fully and with integrity. Have hope again and be more prayerful and connected to the Lord always present despite the fact that we don't see him. Okay, what are these challenges? I will read and you can read also what is projected. This frame six, seven, and eight. The first frame. Can you project the first oh. one? First, monasticism is people. Oh, it's people. It is about people and for the people. The monastic ideals of St. Augustine are for persons who seek God and respond to God's command of love and neighbor. Monastic life is charity, a gift and mission at the same time. Question, how faithfully do we live this gift? Does this gift bear fruit of joy in our work, services, and sacrifices? We can address this to our families. How do we faithfully live? family life? How do we faithfully live a school community life? How do we live faithfully our religious life and so forth and so on? Second challenge. The rule, you have heard about the rule earlier. The rule, a miniaturization of the scripture. So, pinumpile ni Augustine ng Holy Scripture, ginawa niyang maliit translates the monastic ideals of Augustine into concrete action plans. Remember, the Holy Scripture and Augustine are inseparable. His view of man, his view of the world, always starts from Christ and his body, the church. Question, are our organizational structures provided with policies and rules drawn from the Scripture as taught by the church? We multiply policies, rules, and regulations, but we never start from the word of God as taught by the church. And third and final one, love of God and neighbor is the root of monastic ideals of Augustine. All this, I think, is summarized in the New Augustinian Recollect symbol. Fused scripture and heart, pierced with the arrow, that is the word of God, Making Augustine a model of burning love for God and neighbor. How to educate? The question comes. How to educate and form ourselves and our fellows in the values indicated by the elements of the new OER symbol? Can you project the OER symbol? That's the last frame. You see the OER symbol at the right lower portion of the frame, you know, which you use for the logo of this lecture series. Can we be like Augustine, burning love for God and neighbor? But how is he burning with love? The word of God. Augustine became the word of God. That's why you don't see the book anymore. Because the book and Augustine have been fused into one. And the same word of God pierces his heart. That's why he burst into service to others. The flame symbolizes that. Our passion to serve others. Our passion to help the poor. To respond to the sufferings of our people and so forth and so on. So why do we return? Because we need to reroute ourselves in the word of God. We root ourselves once again in the teachings of the church so that whatever we do would originate from that burning love of God and neighbor who is our father Augustine. Is this not for all? This is for all of us. Thank you and good afternoon.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you, you so Father. much for a very nice reflection. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Father Lalar. Uh, we will now entertain some questions from the audience. For the procedure, please raise your hand. So you may be acknowledged, but there are too many. So you might simply just uh, unmute yourself and shoot the questions, especially those who are in the Zoom. But for those in the uh, Facebook, you can write your questions, chat messages, they will be picked up by, by our technology. <laughs> Are there, let me begin with a, let me start the question from Father Toll, addressed to Father Emilio, and also, could also be with, with the rest of the, the, the reactors. The triple characteristics of Augustinian charism are in Kuwait in the rule of St. Augustine. Does that mean that those religious groups, institutes, those, those group, religious groups and other institutes or institutes that follow the rule of St. Augustine also have the Augustinian charism integrated in their respective charism? The question is addressed to Father Emil. Uh, may also be answered by two reactors. <laughs> Emil, do you use that phrase? So may I answer that question directed to us by Father Tol Almayo. When you talk about charism of every congregation, you talk about the founder. You know? And one of the regulations given by Rome is that before you manifest your charism, no, it should you should follow one of the we might say rules, no, traditional religious rule way of life that the church would like, no, to follow as a model. But it does not mean that you're going to follow the charism of the one who wrote the rule. It's only a guideline. A precept. That's why when you talk about the rule of St. Aga as adapted by other religious congregations and religious orders, they would only what follow with myself that inspired the founder. For example, one religious order you know, was inspired by founding uh, his own community, his own order, by reading only the introduction of the rule of St. Augustine. No? So, in other words, no, the, the, the characteristic of the Augustinian charism are not totally taken by all religious orders. They will only be emphasized by the founder no, of the religious order or congregation because it was an inspiration and a model that he or she would follow for the interpretation of their spiritual and charism based on their constitution. So not all no, characteristics of the Augustinian spirit charism would be, uh, we may say, taken by the founder or foundress. The rule serves only as a model. And this is what, with what, uh, and one of the one of the things that we have to remember: the rule of Saint Augustine for other religious congregations and order are just, we might say, a guideline for all of them. Okay. Any other more questions? See, Sir Chito, see, you were raising your hand. Hello, Father Dender. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, loud and clear. Okay. Yes, my question, Father. No, uh, I think from the both the three speakers, as uh, Father Puts a while ago said that the purpose really for the rule of Saint Augustine 
was intended as a rule of conduct for the monks. Although Father Emil Kilatan and Father Larlar try to extend this beyond that actually it is also a way of, let's say, living a true Christian life. According to Father Kilatan, that the reason for the uh, reforms within the Augustinian is that they're going really to stick to the uh, strict form according to the rules of the Augustinian on the Constitution. My question is, are we not going to, I mean, is it a form of secularization again if we... If we what? <laughs> Saint Augustine, which is originally intended for the monks, can be relevant in our times, especially for the lay people. So my question is: Is it? Uh, are we guilty or a kind of again going back to secularizing the rule of Saint Augustine? When in fact, it is intended according to Father Putz really for the monks during uh, his time. Okay, thank you very much for the question. Since it's about the rule and its possible secularization and all of the three speakers have talked about the rule, so this has to be answered by the three speakers. <laughs> um, may I go ahead, Father Lander? Yes. Um, yes, I have mentioned before that, um, that the literary genre of what we call uh, the rule is a precept, which is a conduct of behavior you know, directed towards the monks. Now, we must uh, bear in mind that these are precepts that govern behaviors of persons or of the monks in the monastery, you know, but in view of experiencing church. Okay, this is not just specific rules to follow to create order in, in, the, in the monastery, but it is supposed to, to lead us towards experiencing what is church, proclaiming what is church, because that is basically the Augustinian charism. No? So um, when, we, when we try to leave out the demands of the, uh, of, the, of the rule, then we are actually leaving what is church. And, and true enough, it is not exclusive to to um to the monks, okay, because church is church, the family is church, okay. So, but what I mean by this is that um the the specific pre precepts you no know, mentioned there are are geared toward towards that that um living out of the charism and that is the living out living out what is church and to proclaim that so much so that when people see the friars or the, the nuns or the people related to the recollects live in communion, whether in the school setting, whether in the parish, whether among the secular Christian recollect fraternity or the, the ray, or those who, who work or with us in our mission, they see what it means to the church. We remind them of what is church. We proclaim to them the values of what is to be church. So um, that is why I have mentioned earlier that the characteristics of church must be the same characteristics of the community or the, or the communion we are trying to build here because that is our primordial mission as Augustinians and or as Augustine records. Thank you. Okay, any additions from of the other speakers? Arang alcohol lang hindi lang pang pamilya, pang sports pa. I would like to look okay, sige, I would like to look at this again from the lay and popular point of view. According to the story, when Augustine was made priest, when he was transferred to another community, the monks whom he had to leave behind Ask him for help. Father Augustine, leave us something so we can continue with your dream 
who live fraternally in common life, dedicating ourselves to prayer, study of the scriptures, and service to the church. And Augustine, since he knew the whole scripture, miniaturized the holy book and gave this as the rule. Now, scholars, experts in Augustine's Dinian studies will explain to us the many details, the differences between the rules, the preceptum, the works of the monk, etc. We need all these explanations, but from the popular perspective, this is the holy word of God in the holy scriptures guiding the monks. That's why somebody added, why are we gathered here? Before all else, brothers, we are here to love God and our neighbor. And then the guidelines would follow how to love God and neighbor, how to become church. Now, is it secularization to go back to the word of God? Or is it the mission that we have to go back to the word of God and let the word of God shine on our family life, shine in our school community life, shine in our person so that everything we do would start from Christ. After all, Christ is always with the body, the church. That's the Augustinian mindset. When he thinks of family, he always thinks at the same time of Christ, head and body. So there is no difficulty, I believe, in understanding why we need to return to the word of God to guide us. That's the rule. The rule is the word of God miniaturized by our Father. That's why if you read the rule very carefully, what is the last line of the rule? What is the first line of the Lord? Anti omnia, before all else. That is taken from James. The last line of the rule. So that, read this rule, so that if you look at yourself in the mirror, and you see yourself beautiful, give thanks to God. But, upon looking at yourself in the mirror, you see yourself still ugly, pray to the Lord to deliver us from evil. That's the last line of the Our Father. Okay, thank you very much, Father. So it's probably instead of secularizing the rule, Christianizing the rule. Uh, Father Emil, there is a question for you. Okay. Uh, addressed to Father Emil from Mr. Rafael Sagrador. Father Emil, the rule of St. Augustine reached Europe in the Middle Ages, in the form of a legend, correct, Oba? If yes, in what sense was it consistent with the rule which started in North Africa? Thank you, Paul. Sabi di Mr. Rafael Sagador. I said that the Augustinian community founded with Augustine in North Africa ceased to exist, especially when the Muslims invaded North Africa. But I, I mentioned in the lecture that before the death, even before the death of Augustine, many of his works were already transferred to Europe, now via Sicily, that is the southern tip of, the, we might say, of Italy. And from there, the, the works you know, were, were being spread. You know? I'm talking about the rule you know, and the works, not the foundation. You have to distinguish that. You know? So many of the works of Augustine before, even before he died and after his death were in order to save from destruction were transferred. And it was done via even the remains of Augustine. And the remains were transferred to, uh, uh, to Sicily and until it, uh, the, 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 the remains were placed in the Basilica of St. Augustine in Pavia, Italy or Pavia. You know? So as I said, the foundation of the monastic uh, we might say, uh, communities of Augustine historically are not connected with the present history of the order of St. Augustine. No, not the rule. The rule is the work, and the work and the spirit continues. No, that's why when Pope Innocent IV and Pope Alexander IV, no, in the two unions of the, of the hermit groups, so they, they, the hermits who embraced Augustine, considered him as their spiritual founder. But the historical founders were these two popes, 
that helped mold and form canonically the order of St. Augustine. They were Innocent IV and Alexander IV. The rule is the, is the, in, is the influence. That's the thing that I would like to, em, to emphasize in the lecture. No, not the connection between North Africa and Europe. No, there were no direct historical connections. The legends were uh, based on this uh, uh, history in order to find this connection. But many historians, no, when they saw that these were only legends and they have no historical basis, no, set, set aside these legends. Let's go back to historical facts based on historical documents, not legends. Okay. Any other questions from the audience? See, Sir Isidro uh, Sulevan. Uh, um, Sir Isidro Sulevan, you have to you raise your hand. Out of the list, I. Okay. Please unmute so you can be. Please unmute, sir. Uh, that's, uh... Sorry, yeah. Okay. okay so Good afternoon. Are... Good afternoon. Yeah, you're her. Father, good afternoon. I'm Mr. Sullivan from you know, <clears throat> Uh I really admire the power of the memory of Father Emil. And Father Emil may, may answer this or Father Potts. Um, looking back from your discussion about the, the, the intelligence of Augustine, uh, he wrote many books. In fact, he became a chair of rhetoric in Milan. Uh, he became a, was a teacher of grammar, a spokesperson in the palace in Milan. Meaning to say, he became an exemplar during his time, especially in the world of rhetoric. Now, uh, how can we certain that the interpretation of the the of the OSA or the OI historians of the writings of Augustine are really certain in accordance with the deepness of what really St. Augustine had in mind. That's all, Father. Okay. I'll just answer that now. Um, now, the question, if I got, I got this question clear, now, how are the Augustinians and the Recollects and or the Augustinian family faithful in interpreting the works of Augustine? Did I yeah, get yeah. your question? Okay. Now, uh, not of, uh, in my case, I am a historian. I'm not an Augustinologist. There's a course on Augustinology, you know, trying to get the, 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 the original message, the authentic message of Augustine. Now, there are many Augustinologists, they have their own interpretation. But what I'm trying to, as a historian, is that what the works itself tells us and the light no, of Augustine based on his confessions and the biography written by St. Posidius are the basis of or are the basis of our interpretation of the works of Augustine. Because remember, Augustine is not dogmatic. He's more, uh, we might say, a father, no, a friend. And he's just sharing with, with us what he had experienced during his lifetime, a way of life. And it is modeled after the Jerusalem community that occurred after Pentecost. The Christian way of life as idealized by the Jerusalem was the model that Augustine has been proposing to us, no? the way we should live as Christians. So that's the historical point of view. But for the Augustinologists, I leave that for the, the, 
the deeper question, the deeper answer to our Augustinologist, Father Potentio. Okay, there is another question here for Father Potentio. Father, uh, Father let me just uh, make a comment on Sir Sitoy. So, um, being Augustinian or Augustinian recollect is never a guarantee that we interpret rightly the works of St. Augustine. That's one thing for sure. As even many Augustinian Augustinologists or Augustinian scholars you know, interpret the work of St. Augustine diversely. Some soundly, some do not interpret it rightly. Okay, so, but of course, no, there are some, some things or some considerations to, to consider for one to truly interpret St. Augustine. Like for example, the, the historical context of the work. Number one. Now, second is philology that would have to take into account the, the semantic development of particular expressions. No? And lastly, you have to study different corroborative texts you know, within the Augustinian corpus in order to, to, to affirm you know, one truth or to deny it so that you will be very sure that your interpretation is right. So it's never easy. It takes a lot of time and training because you have to study the, the background, the, the controversies surrounding that, and this would be historical. And of course, the language, you know, the original language and the style of writing. All this would be, be done if you study um, what they call the, the, the ancient Christian literature for that matter. So as I've said, sir, no, being Augustinians or being, being Augustinian recollects is never guaranteed that we interpret Augustine rightly. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Father Potts. But there is another question here for you. Medyo pa to ayo hindi hindi may theological discussion. No, Father Lalar. Yes, Father Lalar. May I add to what my confers mentioned? No, the historical point of view and the Augustinologist point of view. The question is very important because the brother asking the question is in search of assurance that we interpret Augustine correctly. From the popular point of view, see, to understand Augustine, you have to have the Holy Bible on one side and the teacher, the mother church. No amount of scholarly approach, no amount of historical excavation would help us really get into the heart of Augustine if we do not have the word of God on one side and the church as our teacher. Okay, another, okay. another question probably would be answered by the three. This question comes from G2C. Is it possible to draft also a constitution for lay based on the rule? Father Remy? The rule itself no, is already a guideline. You not, don't need to make a constitution for the lay. It's already a a rule written for lay monks and this could be lived by the lay and adapting it to their to their way of life that's why the rule itself is only a guideline and it could be applied you no know, within the monastery or even by lay persons there's no need to draft a constitution that's too much no that's too much you know? the lay lives you no know, in their own way of life in their own occupation in their own uh, in their own manner that's why there is no need a constitution for that. They have to read the rule and get the, the, the message of Augustine rooted in the word of God of how to become good Christians in their own way, in their own way of life. That's why if we're going to set as, as you know, if late years, uh, hundreds, hundreds of uh, centuries later, Saint Francis de Sales wrote, "Not introduction to the to the devout that reflects the same that we live the word of God in different vocations, but we cannot impose 
the life of a recollect no priest to a, a lay person only the spirit no that can be uh, we might say we could share the charism but adapted to the lay situation of the person that's why you cannot be you cannot force the pink the, the contemplative way of life to the lay people no you cannot do that that's why the rule itself is a guide to remind us and one what is important what is beautiful about the rule the love of god and neighbor it talks about the way we should treat one another and the way we should deal with it because every person is the, is in the image and likeness of God. And we have to love that person because when we love a brother or a sister, we love God. That's it, no? No need to create a constitution that is too demanding. That's, that's uh, on the, the point of view of a historian. Father Lander, may I say something? Okay, can I be heard? Sure, sure. You're heard, you're heard. Okay, so um, just to um, second what Father Emil has said, no, what is needed is to see the the values that we see in the um, in the in the rule and apply them in 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 the context of of the laity. Like for example, having the basis of my relationship with my brother in community as my relationship with God, which means that the the basis of my relationship with my brother in community. Is my relationship with God? Is my experience with God? And that is in, in the rule. So if, for example, we were gonna translate that in, in, in layman's context, you see that, for example, your relationship with your wife or with your husband must be based on your relationship with God because marriage is your vocation, Christian vocation that will lead you to your own salvation or sanctification. And another another point, like for example, the putting things in common. Now, if you put that in, in the context of, of a human relationship, you see many relationships are broken because of things kept for themselves. You see, um, even among husbands and wives, marriage is broken simply because of the secrets that the wife or the husband kept for themselves. So if you're gonna apply the value of putting things in common, no that would also strengthen strengthen human relationship based on an Augustinian value that we find in the world. Thank you. Okay, Father Nalar. It's to uh, we mentioned earlier that the rule is the holy scriptures. Miniaturized by our father to guide the monks who he was leaving because he had to join the other community of priests, being the bishop at the time. So if the rule is the word of God, the word of God is applicable to all aspects of life. In fact, there is a study which calls the rule simply as love expressed in different ways. The care of clothing, unity, prayer so the rule is the word of god and is it not christ himself who said i am the way the truth and the life so the question is can we make a constitution for the lay another constitution for another community all we have to say is why don't we reroot ourselves in the word of god and in starting from the word of god the god who said i am the beginning and i am the end see the God who said, I am divine, you are the branches. I think applicability of the rule is very possible, but ensured that we return to the word. Okay, last and final question we will entertain from James Villarin. Allow me to read this. How can we reply to the question or criticism that the existence of many orders in the Augustinian family OSA, OAR, OAD, AA might be contrary to the principle of unity as preached by the rule of St. Augustine. Anybody from the speakers? Uh, yes, Father Larmar. 
the word of God is viewed from different angles, different points of view. And if the word of God is the rule miniaturized by the word of God is the rule as word of God miniaturized to serve the Christians, the believers, then we look at the word of God from different points of view. The Oad emphasizes on humility. The Osa emphasizes on the triad of elements. See, interior life, community life, and service life. In the case of the recollects, we emphasize the same, but with a difference. Because there is an accent given to a stricter form of life and greater desire for holiness and excellence in the service to others. But it's the same of word of God. And the word of God is like a multifaceted diamond. See, each face of the diamond reflects the entire word of God. So if you reflect the word of God through the Oad, it's the same word of God, but emphasize according to their times and circumstances. There is no sense of creating conflict among them because the word of God is for all, but like a multifaceted diamond, we reflect different faces, different. And the question now is accent. What do the O add accents? What do they emphasize? What do the OSA emphasize? What do the recollects emphasize? What do we as lay, as a family emphasize? Just like we are different families, but each family has some emphasis. Some family emphasizes what? Material possession. Others, perhaps unity. There are many emphasis. And so similarly, there are many orders who follow the rule and creating emphasis according to the gift of the Holy Spirit. I would like to continue the, uh, the answer of Father Lauro Larlar. If he uses the family and the diamond as, as an analogy, no? Yes, there are different orders, different congregations inspired by the rule of St. Augustine. It's not, it is not a disunity, it's rather this is charism, gifts. And remember, I would like to emphasize the gift of the Spirit, no? as explained by St. Paul in his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, because like the diversity of gifts given to the church, the church is like a human body with different parts and different function. Yet, the gifts that we receive came from the same spirit. And as one body, even though with different parts, we are united because we have only one head, who is Jesus Christ himself. That's why the congregations no, and the religious orders are not, are not, dis are not we might say, signs of disunity. They are parts of the same body with emphasis. And each gift for each congregation is, we might say, authenticated by the Holy, by the Mother, by, by the Mother Church, the Vatican, the Congregation for Religious uh, Consecrated Life and Apostolic Life, to authenticate what role do each congregation you know, play in this body? What function? And if is the gift change, does, does the gift of this uh, that received from the founder of uh, is authentic, coming from the Holy Spirit? So there are no contrary. There are no. They are just parts of the body working with its own function. Yet, you no, know, we are belong to one body with one head, the church, and this is what we call charism. And the analogy of the body given to us by say gives us a very clear picture about what is the church all about. Thank you. Thank you. There were actually four metaphors.